one Simon here. Jib number eight, season two. We left it Casey. Just gone into Singapore, a couple of girls taken over illegally. The girls have gone off to work for three months now. Casey has a nice weekend. Lovely hotel in Singapore. This time he does go about a bit and see the sights in Singapore. Back he comes. That's his second time. Uh, back into Bangkok. Junta meets him this time. He goes to Jib. Meets Jib at her apartment. First time I think Casey's been to the apartment. Jib's given him two and a half thousand US dollars. Bang, there you go. That means the tribe's got another two and a half thousand dollars and Jib's got another five thousand dollars. Two more girls, gone. Casey, off back to Patea. Taxi, Junta's busy. <laughs> Junta and Jib have been sleeping with each other. Um, and the weeks are going by. Jib still hasn't found any other guys to do the runs yet. It's not a problem at the moment, she's earning money. The tribe will be due back soon and they'll have some money to collect so they'll be happy. One evening Jib um, is out with Junta just having a drink and Junta turns around to Jib and says that he actually wants a pay rise, he wants more money. He wants 70,000 baht a month now for everything he's doing. Jib's like, why would you want more money? 50,000 baht a month is huge money for what you're doing. Everything's good, we're now sort of, sort of partners. You've got free accommodation. Everything's good, why do you want to rattle, shake the boat? Why do you want to upset things? No, you can't have a pay rise. Looks in Junta's eyes, he looks a bit upset about this. Why would he want to pay rise? He's got loads of money. He's with Jib all the time. He's not seeing anybody else. But you can see in his eyes, not very happy. Anyway, nothing said more for a couple of days. Back in the UK, the lawyer, John, he's got two guys who's been survey on surveillance outside this cafe. He's starting to get feedback from the guys. The elders, older ladies are always in and out. Lots of Thai girls are in and out, daytime, evening, night. They've worked out the surveillance that there is apartments upstairs. Guys going in, not eating, going in, coming out hour later, two hours later. A pattern is forming and they report back to the lawyer. He can see, he can't quite be sure, but apartments, shop next door, cafe, guys going in and out, it's looking very much like it's a brothel. Needs more proof. He pays one of his surveillance guys money to go in and get the services of a girl, get into the apartments, have a look around. Back in Bangkok, it's gone a couple of weeks more, Casey's off again. Usual thing, Junta picks him up. He's in Bangkok, meets the girls, has a night with the girls again. Off they go to Singapore. Three trips, this time straight through, no problem. He's now beginning to understand exactly how to go through the customs and everything. Three trips done, more money for Jib. The elders arrive in Bangkok, short visit. They're only there for a few days this time. Very happy, Jib's just paid them. That's, uh, was it three lots of money now? Two lots? They've got money, they're happy. The gold, they're paying Jib for the gold that she keeps sending, all that's settled. Jib's making money on the gold again. Everything's great. The elders are actually off somewhere else. Um, only a short stay as I mentioned, but they don't mention where. They do pop in and see Lek. Everything's settled. Off they go again. Casey's back. No problems. Eight. One night. Jib. Junta. Jib sat in the back of the car. Um, and uh, a 
as the chauffeur driven you know, in her Honda. She's off for a meal, Junta. She looks down at her feet and finds some female underwear on the floor in the back of the car. Oh, it's not hers. And says to Junta, what's this? Whose is this? And Junta, very quick on his feet, I must be one of the girls we're running around, dropped it from their bags or whatever. But he's staring at Jib in his rear view mirror, his eyes in contact. Jib's not daft, she's looking at him, she's thinking, yeah, you're playing around behind my back. You want more money so you can go out socialising. You don't get much time away from me, so you're doing it on work time. They get to the restaurant and Jib has it out and confronts him and they have a full blown rout in the restaurant. And Junta admits, okay, I've been sleeping with another girl now and then. These girls are beautiful and what the hell? And I want more money. Jib goes crazy. But she's not that daft. Get in the car, home. Make sure he drives the car back home. Get up to the apartment and Jib says to Junta, that's it, we're finished, you're sacked, that's the end of your job. She pulls out 50,000 baht from the safe, there's your month's money, it's only two weeks in. Here, get your stuff, leave, now. And he has a go at her, but she's like, don't mess with me, you know the people I deal with. And Junta realises, oh dear, I've just blown the job, everything. Got caught playing around. Jib's, what, 36, 37, 35? The other girls are younger, prettier. He's a man. He's just lost everything. Out he goes. Gone. <sighs> Jib's gonna need to get another assistant quick, another driver quick. Casey, Singapore, back again, it's another trip. No one's meeting at the airport, but he gets a message, phone, taxi to Jibs. He arrives at Jibs. Jib explains what's happened, that Junta has gone, pays him his money, his two and a half thousand dollars. Off he goes, back to Patea. UK. The surveillance, the one guy's gone in to the cafe, acquired the services of a girl, got to the apartments, not gone through with the aerobics, but given the money and asked lots of questions. And the girl, she's told, this is just one of the standard girls there, maybe she's married to a foreigner. She's blurted loads of information out to the surveillance guy. Anyway, maybe an hour passes, them talking, pays her, leaves, reports back to the lawyer. It is a brothel. There's apartments upstairs, they're using some of the apartments to live in and some to, for customers. Now the lawyer has got some information. This is where Jib was working, this is obviously what she was doing. And when she, um, before she was with John, she could have been there for a while. Right, now he's got some ammunition. Now he needs to do the legal things and send the police in to shut it all down. Oh my God. He puts all the files together, all the information, gets onto the a friend of his in the police tells him everything, sets it all up, no problem. The elders, the two elders are not back, they're still away. The others are there, the girls are there. The police raid the cafe. And yes, they find lots of girls, apartments, obvious things are going on. They even catch a customer with a girl in one of the apartments immediately the cafe is shut down restaurant bang the shop 
there's no connection apart from the owners it's elders who own it two elders aren't here there's no no reason to shut the shop down there's nothing that they can prove going through there so that stays open the apartments the girls are living in they can't stop them living there and kicking them on the street but they arrest everyone cart them all off to the station shut the cafe evidence grabbing anything computers paperwork anything they can find to prove what this building is and what these girls are some of these girls they've been arrested they have foreign husbands you know they're doing the jib evening work how do they go explain that to their husbands that they're banged up for the night in a local police station for questioning Ooh, and some of the elders have been caught as well and arrested for questioning it's a big sting maybe 10 12 people could have been more could have been more back to Thailand KC another trip now this was going to be his last trip he said four everything goes as normal but again Jib has not got a driver um, on the books but she gets hold of a, a friend of a friend taxi driver to use her car gets the girls the same story the same routine Casey comes up spends time with the girls has fun usual off to the airport gets through no problem Singapore a couple of days back to the airport stopped Singapore airport He's taken into a room and questioned. He's been going now backwards and forwards every time with two girls and not come back with the girls. He's not arrested, but he's under caution. They start quizzing him, the customs, immigration, police. They've got video footage of him going through with two girls. And this is what, a fourth time? very calm Casey's in trouble here but he sticks to his story and just says I come through with girls friends of mine girlfriends we have visas we have fun together I only stop for a few days they still stop they come back maybe in a week a month whatever they're friends I have lots of friends girlfriends they push him and push him <coughs> cannot prove that he's trafficking but they warn him if you're coming again with girls you will not get entry next time you will be if we believe what you're doing you'll be arrested and he's released onto an airplane back to Bangkok oh my that's the end of it there's no way Casey can do more and yet he's still going to land at Bangkok is he going to be pulled there he's starting to sweat and worry Oh, this is going to be bad. He gets into Bangkok, nothing, straight through. He's so relieved, straight on the phone to Jib, tells her what's happened. Jib's fine, she said. Okay, so you can't do any more trips. Not this way, anyway. And Jib's very quick on the feet. He can drive. She says to Casey, come and see me. Get in a taxi, come to my apartment. Now, what's happened back in the UK hasn't filtered through to Jib and Lek. And the other two elders had gone off somewhere else. So nobody in Thailand knows about what's happened in the UK with the shutdown of the cafe and all the questioning. Casey turns up at Jib's apartment and Jib tells him she wants, can he be her driver? She'll pay him a salary because he's learnt, done the trips. She'll be an asset to him for teaching other mules. She'll give him a job, 50,000 baht a month, the car driving her backwards and forwards, doing the gold runs and helping her recruit mules. This is perfect. He doesn't have to go back over the border. He can stay in Thailand. He's getting the salary. Now Jib says, I am going to have to move to Patea because this is where we're going to find more people to do this plus I'll be nearer to Lex's house um, 
There's no point in me being in Bangkok. Casey agrees. I'll take the job. No problem. And we're going to have to leave it there, I think. Again. What's happening in the UK? The raid, the police, all the girls being questioned. Will anyone talk? Two elders, where have they gone? Casey almost got caught, but there's more money come in. More money for Jib and the elders. Ah, oh, and it's coming up for the last episode. Oh my. It's going to be a busy one, the next one. See you on there. Bye.